everyone, welcome to my channel, Zyla here, and today we're gonna be building an impossible table. Now, what is an impossible table, you ask? It's actually a tensegrity table. I was scrolling on social media and I saw this like 3D printed little impossible table, and I was like, that's super cool. It's a beautiful use of tensegrity and is an awesome demo of statics, the class that I slept through in college. And so I was like, you know, I wonder if I can build a full-size version. Also, I've been looking for an excuse to try steam bending wood, and this seems like a great idea. So I sketched a couple ideas in my sketchbook, and this is what I came up with. All right, without further ado, let's build that table. Actually, before we build the table, you should click the subscribe button. I'll give you two seconds to subscribe. Okay, now let's build the table. First, I'm gonna cut this nice long piece of ash down to size. Then I made a jig out of cut up pieces of the 2x4 for the wood to bend around. So we built the steam box off camera because it's not spectacularly exciting. It, it's just a box with a kettle and a garden hose going into the box. Inside of the box, we've placed all these, is this in focus? Dowels to hold all the pieces of wood apart as they get steamed. And then just loose caps that make fun sounds. An instrument. Then we just loaded up that nice ash to get steamed for about 30 minutes. Wait, pause. Let's actually learn something here. So steam bending works because wood in its like super simple form is basically a bunch of fibers held together by a material called lignin. Think of it like pages in a magazine. If it didn't have all these stupid business reply mails in it, good lord, there's like 10 of them. When the lignin is hard, it holds all the pages rigidly and you can't really bend it. If the lignin is softened, it allows the fibers to move against each other, meaning the ones on the inside of the curve can compress and the ones on the ex outside can allow the interior ones to slide against it. And then once you allow it to cool back down, it'll remain in that new shape because that's the way that the fibers have been set. Steam is the easiest way to achieve this. You can also do it with boiling water, but steam is hotter than boiling water, so you can get a more aggressive bend out of it. Once it was nice and steamy, it was time to bend. Then we quickly followed and did the second set of legs that go the other way. That didn't spring as much as I thought it was gonna spring. Once it was completely dry, it was time to glue. Laminating multiple strips of wood together like this really helps it keep its shape. That's pretty strong. Then I just cleaned up the edges with a hand plane until it was mostly flat, and then hit it with a sander to make it smooth. And then, in all of those little gaps, I used thick, a thickened epoxy mixture to fill them in. And my secret is that I actually use kitchen flour, not wood flour, for lighter woods, because when mixed with epoxy, it just matches the color of the wood so much better. So that's what I'm using here. And then once it sets, I of course plane it and sand it down again. Then I just needed to trim the edges down to length. And for that beautiful finished curve, I hit it with the round over bit on the table router on all of the outside edges. And then to finish them off, I varnished using Lust by Total Boat in matte, which is the same varnish I used on the corset, and I love it. All right, so for the top of the table, I wanted to carry that theme of bent wood and also tensegrity, so I bent some wood and got out some tension wire. And then I also wanted to use it as an excuse to play with Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy for the first time. And since I am pouring epoxy, I need to glue all my wood pieces together and add my tension wires before I pour and make sure all of the containers are basically waterproof from each other. Product placement. This is my awesome Uncle Peter. He is a professional canoe builder and not a professional product modeler. But, you know, he tried. <laughs> Your canoe looks beautiful in the background. I should hope so. <laughs> but for reals, he's letting me use his shop during quarantine while mine is shut down back in Cleveland. So thank you so much and you should order a canoe. Cause you know, 
quarantine canoe. So for epoxy, I am using Total Boat Thick Set Epoxy because this is a fairly large and fairly deep pour. I don't think I need to say anything, you just get to watch a fun epoxy pour. So it's the next morning and I just came back into the shop to look at the epoxy and after we poured the epoxy last night we lit a fire so that it would stay warm in the workshop and then when we came back an hour later the shop had like somehow hit 90 degrees so it appears that the epoxy has overheated. It looks like this which is really not ideal because this is supposed to be crystal clear and it appears that it's yellowed slightly. The exothermic reaction of the previous pour caused a little bit of rippling on the top as well as some bubbles on the edges, but mostly it caused shrinkage which pulled the epoxy in from the edges. So I just took a little bit more clear epoxy, poured it on top, filled in the gaps, and it worked perfectly. Like, it looks great. Once that was pretty much set, I was able to actually rip a lot of that leaked epoxy which wasn't totally set out, and then I got to demold it and see what it looked like from the other side. To get it ready for the next pour, I needed to clean up all the hot glue and leaked epoxy off all the edges and sand it smooth so that once the epoxy gets poured in, it will look very nice. Okay, so because of some of the bubbles that formed here in the clear, presumably because of air that came out of the wood, I'm gonna epoxy seal the wood before we do the next pour. Monkeys can learn. For the first layer of the dark pour, which is also the top of the table, I'm using a translucent amount of gunmetal by Black Diamond Pigments. Ready? Yep. And then... Once that was pretty much set, I did a very thin pour of an opaque black, and that will hide the hardware in the next layer. And just like that, it's hardware time. The beauty of video is that you don't have to sit around waiting for the epoxy to set. So I found these D-rings that are actually coming off of picture frame hangers, and I made little loops of armature wire to hang them from the sides. And then because I wasn't totally convinced that it was gonna be strong enough, I actually fiberglassed them down. And the point of the fiberglass is to sort of spread the load out once they get pulled on. Plus, the beauty of fiberglass is that it goes completely clear in epoxy, and there's tons of extra fiberglass laying around a canoe shop. And now the final pour of opaque black, and this one will set all of the hardware in place, so those loops and the threaded inserts. Now it's just time to sand the whole thing smooth. Be super glad I'm sparing having you watch the entire thing because this took hours. Then I had to do the same to the other side, but on this side I had to plane down the wood that was raised. Because why not make life harder for myself? Then I'm just gonna seal everything in with a clear coat of tabletop epoxy. I started with the bottom, and I had to do the bottom to make sure that those clear sections are crystal clear all the way through, um, and then I failed to record it, so. Now we're just gonna skip to me sanding the edges, and you can see I put a ring of masking tape on the bottom to protect any drips from going the other way, and then it was time to sand the top, give it its final sanding, make sure everything is perfect and smooth, and then your jam comes on, so this happens, and then it was time to pour. And once that was cured, it was time to just pull the masking tape off the bottom and that pulls all the drips with it. And to make that really easy, you can use a heat gun and it softens the epoxy just enough to get the perfect pull. Very satisfying. 
Rather than put a ton of effort into pouring an epoxy base for this thing, I just took one of the Pine Home Depot tabletops, painted it black with acrylic paint, and then did a black epoxy pour over it, and it actually looks really good. I'm wondering if I should have done that for the top. <laughs> It did require two pours though, because there were bubbles, as there always are with epoxy and wood, especially around the edges. But with two pours, pff, looked great. To install the hardware into the base, I drilled holes for the threaded inserts and the eyelets, and then attached them. And just like that, it's time for assembly. Now, don't let the way I edited this video fool you because assembly was insanely difficult and took me like a week of making mistakes. So just tossing that out there. Um, I started by drilling holes for the tensioning cable to go through and then I decided that I was not comfortable with just one hole and having the crimp on either side. So I drilled a second one so it could loop through, which is more friction and more dispersal of the load. And to try to make that solution a little bit classier, I chiseled out a little channel for the wire to sit flush against the wood in. Then with the table propped horizontally and looking properly TIE Fighter-ish in its final geometry, I grabbed an extra pair of hands, thank you uncle, and crimped the wire in the center in place. How does it look? Then I crimped on these side tension wires with turnbuckles at the bottom. So in a shocking turn of events, uh, I sort of put it together to see how far off it was, and it does stay up. I... So this just happened. Um, like, tensioned it too much, and it torqued and broke. I don't really know what I'm going to do now. That's not very fixable. That, that cannot be fixed. So what did I do? I fixed it. Gave myself like 30 seconds to curse loudly and then I grabbed some epoxy and some carbon fiber tape and epoxied in the seam and then used the carbon fiber tape just like I would fiberglass on the base, figuring that it's not gonna be super visible since this is the top support of the table. All right, and with that, I think it's time to assemble this. You ready to see its final form, its final beautiful look? Let's hit it. This would be easier if I had some help. All right, and there's my magical Bentwood Impossible table. I know I'm a little bit late to the party, but I put far too much effort into getting this to be like classy and beautiful and also magical. So I hope that you like it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, just so you know, I post all of my projects as they're happening live on my Instagram stories. So if you're interested in that, feel free to follow me on Instagram as well as Twitter. Many thanks to Total Boat for providing all of the epoxy that was used in this video. And you can't even tell there's a carbon fiber band-aid. Maybe I should just pull it on the other side, just in case. <laughs> yeah, let me show you a beauty shot.